Florida just signed a bill banning all kids under 14 from social media, but what does that actually mean? Plus, we're heading into Final Four weekend and we've got everything you need to know. And you're gonna need a pair of these to catch a sneak peek of the eclipse. Get ready, cause this is First Stop News. Hey everyone, I'm Larry. Welcome to our very first episode of First Stop News. We're a new show for kids, or really anyone, who wants to understand what's going on out there. Basically, we're your first stop for everything you need to know. We're gonna bring you current events, deep dive explainers, and stories you wanna hear about. So make sure to like and subscribe for more. Let's start off with our first ever question of the day. We're heading into the final four weekend of March Madness, the penultimate round of the NCAA basketball tournament where, you guessed it, the final four teams for both men's and women's basketball will battle it out to get into the finals. We've got more on the tournament later, but you gotta admit, this year the women's tournament has been dominating headlines. Even former Lakers center Shaquille O'Neal told People Magazine he was more excited about the women's game than the men's. So our question of the day, when was the women's first NCAA tournament held? Was it in 1939, 1982, or 1998? You think you know? Stick around and we'll tell you if you're right. There is major space news happening, so major that it won't happen again until 2044. On April 8th, a total solar eclipse will happen in parts of Mexico, Canada, and the United States. Thanks to NASA, I can actually show you how an eclipse works. So this is the sun, this is the moon, and this is the earth. Usually we have no problem getting the sun's rays, but what happens during an eclipse is the moon, as it rotates around the earth, is going to pass in front of the sun. So if you wanna see that from the sun's perspective, this is the other side of the moon, where we'll actually be under the dark side of the moon. And the moon is going to create a path of totality, a shadow of the moon actually, on planet earth. It's gonna start at the northern tip of Mexico, cut right through the middle of the US, and then kinda of hit the southern corner of Canada on the way out. And if you're in the path of totality, you're gonna have around four minutes of total darkness outside. But even if you're not, you're still gonna end up catching a partial eclipse. People are so excited that hotels along the path are sold out, and Delta Airlines even has two flights that will fly directly along the path so passengers can see it from the skies. But a warning, looking directly at the sun is not safe for your eyes. So if you plan on sneaking a peek, make sure you're wearing eclipse glasses like these. Totally fashion forward, can't see a thing, could look straight at the sun. Or, if you don't have eclipse glasses, we talked to astronomer Jeffrey Bennett to see if there were any other ways to experience the eclipse. With your back to the sun, of course. By any little hole in a piece of paper, even using your fingers like that to make holes between your fingers, you'll see like a crescent sun down on the ground. You can even stand under a tree and look at the sunlight filtering down through the leaves and you'll see lots of images. I like to say there's only one bad place to be during the total eclipse and that is inside. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a bill banning social media for kids under 14. So what does this mean? If you live in the state of Florida and you're under 14, you won't be allowed to have accounts on platforms like TikTok, Snapchat, or Instagram. And if you're 14 and 15 years old, the bill says you have to have your parents' permission before having an account. Now, most of these platforms technically already require kids to be 13 or older to sign up. Governor DeSantis says social media is harmful to kids' well-being. Being buried in those devices all day is not the best way to, to grow up. Some states, like Utah and Arkansas, have passed laws requiring kids under 18 to get parental consent to access social media. But Florida's law will be the strictest in U.S. history, and it's expected to face challenges in court. People against the bill say it violates U.S. Constitution's First Amendment that protects free speech. They also say parents, not the government, should be able to make decisions about what their kids do online. The law is set to take effect in Florida on January 1st, 2025. We're gonna keep watching this to see what happens, but what do you all think about this? We wanna hear your opinion, so email us at hi at firststopnews.com. On Wednesday, a strong earthquake hit Taiwan, which is a country in East Asia. Now, some of this video is kinda scary. It was the biggest earthquake in decades at a 7.4 magnitude. It happened in the city of Hualien, an earthquake happens when the rocks underneath the Earth's surface move and causes the ground to shake. This does happen all the time, all around the world, and usually you can't feel it, but sometimes it can be really big and cause a lot of damage. Taiwan's in an area called the Ring of Fire, which is where many earthquakes and volcanoes happen. Many buildings were damaged and thousands lost power. A lot of people are injured and some have died, but cleanup and rescue efforts are underway. The White House has been monitoring the situation and is prepared to send any necessary assistance. 
Our video of the day is a rare baby hippo. This is the first birth in the zoo in 2024, and what a birth. It's a pygmy hippo, and it's endangered. The International Union for Conservation of Nature estimates that there are less than 2,500 of the West African species left in the wild. So staff at this zoo in Athens, Greece, were thrilled to welcome this little guy. Every captive birth of pygmy hippos is extremely important, and we're very happy to see this baby grow into a healthy adult hippo, and hopefully one day reproduce and produce more pygmy hippos. He's healthy, he's happy, and he's been hanging out with his mom, Lizzie. Some other facts about pygmy hippos. They're small. A common hippo weighs about 10 times as much as this species, and they're nocturnal, meaning they're most active at night. Who knew? March is over, but the madness goes on as we head into Final Four weekend. The biggest story this season has definitely been the women's games. Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark led her team with 41 points into the Final Four by knocking out reigning champs LSU. That game was the most watched college basketball game ever for ESPN. 12.3 million people tuned in for the rematch of last year's top two teams. Iowa will next face the Yukon Huskies, who will not make it easy. The Huskies have made it to the last 15 of 16 Final Fours. Friday night's game is the second of a doubleheader following the Battle of the Carolinas when South Carolina faces NC State. Now, let's talk to men's games. Purdue is taking on NC State's men's team. They're playing for the strange honor of potentially being the national champions with the most regular season L's. And UConn will face tournament first-timers Alabama. Speaking of making history, that reminds me of our question of the day. What was, when was, not what was, what year was? Drum roll, please. Oh boy. Question. Speaking of making history, that reminds me of our question of the day. When was the women's first NCAA tournament held? Was it 1939, 1982, or 1998? Drum roll, please. I, I, I don't know what that sound was, but that wasn't a drum roll. 1982. Did you get it right? The history of women's basketball started way before 1982. That was just the year that the National Collegiate Athletic Association, or what we know as the NCAA, started sponsoring the sport. That's why Caitlin Clark is the highest scoring D1 NCAA athlete ever, but it's actually Pearl Moore of Francis Marion who set the all-time women's scoring record but she did it back in 1979. Do you have a sibling? If you do, you probably already know it's like having a built-in best friend for life. I've got three of them, but for, for the record, I'm the oldest, so. No one knows better than me that living with siblings means sometimes arguing over clothes, games, and who gets to ride shotgun. But as it turns out, a little sibling rivalry is actually good for you. No. According to a study by the University of Cambridge, having a little healthy competition or disagreements with your brothers and sisters when you're younger can actually help you develop social skills as you get older. And guess what? There's a day just for you to celebrate each other. Yep, April 10th is National Siblings Day. Now, it's not actually a federal holiday, so yes, you still have to go to school, but it is a day to celebrate the special bond you share. It was founded in 1997 along with the Siblings Day Foundation, a nonprofit that's working to get the day nationally recognized just like Mother's Day or Father's Day. So how can you celebrate? Write your siblings a card. Tell them how much they mean to you. Or just let them borrow that shirt they've been asking about for months. Hey, maybe give them the game controller before they go to mom. Goes a long way. And if you don't have siblings, you can still celebrate. On siblingsday.org, you can send a card to someone who is like a sibling to you, which is just as important. Some of you told us what you like best about having a sibling and your favorite things about them. My favorite thing about her is she always wants to play with me. When I'm sad, she always helps me. My favorite thing about him is that he always is super funny. You're right, I am. <laughs> That's it. That wraps our first show together ever. Thanks for checking us out. We'll be back at it again with more news next Friday. So until then, keep your eclipse glasses handy. We'll see you guys next week.